So now we can start just building our map. Uh, we'll go ahead and try to make a room similar to the one before. So you can hit on um, in your texture window here, we'll go to browse. And I'm just going to type in, uh, let's, let's actually type in the word floor. So uh, you see there's, uh, I have some custom textures in here, but there's, um, you might recognize some of the Half-Life ones. So you, sometimes the textures are called floor, sometimes they're abbreviated like FLR. Um, so you'll learn the abbreviations and actually I'll make another video about it. But um, here's one called Crete Floor, Crete, f Crete 4 Floor 03. Okay, so let's zoom into our origin. And I'm going to come here and just draw like that, holding down the left button. And then you see it creates another, well, we have this 3D box. So we haven't created the, the block yet. And I can come over here and stretch it to the size I want. Oops. Grab the, okay, we'll start from, there we go, okay. There we go. All right, now it's working. So yeah, you can grab these little handles and bring it to the size you like. You can also click into the middle of it and drag it around. So let's do, let's put it right, put it right under that origin line. And fifth, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to put, we'll, we'll corner, put the corner at the, uh, at the origin there. So this is our floor. So I'll hit right click and create. And we have our floor. So this is actually a pretty mid-sized room. And just to get an idea of how big the room is, we're going to go to our Entities, Entity Creation Tool, that uh, turns this on. And I see I have it defaulting to in Info Player Start. If you don't, you can just open this up and grab Info Player Start and click in to the 3D space where you want Gordon to appear. And that will kind of give you a frame of reference. Uh, to how big this little area is. So um, let's put in some walls. And so I'm just actually just going to type wall. And uh, let's see what we got here. So we can do really anything. I'm just going to start with uh, maybe this sort of outside brick wall. I'm going to stick with the same uh, one grid width. And it really is up to you how you want, if you want it to start below the line like this, we're going to start it right at the floor there. So I'm going to do four units. And perfect. Now if I was going to drag this wall up, you can see that the texture re repeats like that. So it's a good idea to um, keep that in mind because the uh, that's not what we want, so we're just going to do a four unit, four grid grid squares is what I, I should really be calling it. Um, and we'll, let's go ahead and build the rest. So we can do, um, go ahead and do left click on this side, drag down, and it, it memorized what I had last time. And I'll just do create, right click create, and now we have two, two walls. So let's go ahead and um, let's try changing the grid size a little bit. So we're going to um, lower the grid. Now you can see that this wall here, now if I use the selection and click here, let's turn our 3D space around so it matches up with my top view. The red is the selected thing, the selected wall. And I'm just going to make it a thinner wall. And this is just to show you how this works in 3D space. Okay, so we can even select both of them and change their size at the same time. So I'm holding control on the keyboard and I got my selection. I'm going to grab the other one in the 3D view. Now I have both. Now there's resizing handles on all your selected objects. So in this case these two walls, we can move them down to fit the block and do the same on the bottom. And now it's kind of in line with the floor here. So let's also do something similar. We're going to hold control and select both of these. And I'm going to do, so you can do a copy and paste. Normally I would do control C and control V, just a shortcut. So you can see I have, let me zoom out, two sets of walls. I'm going to do control R and that's a rotate. 
boom. I can slide it back into place here. And now we're walled in. All right, now every Half-Life map has to be an enclosed space. So you can see the gray out here, that's the void. And you basically can't have any voids in a map or it won't compile. And we'll talk about compiling later, but that's basically when you export the design map into a playable map, a BS, BSP file that the game engine can use. So let's do something else here. Why don't we widen these a little bit? I'm just going to freehand these out like this to the nearest grid, pulling on those handles and stretching these out. Okay, like that. Maybe we can have something where the player can get up on this. Um, second level here and you notice I want to make it a ring around here and that we have these gaps so I'm just going to take two of these and then use my handle to stretch like that and now we have these four blocks are going to be representing walls and floors on this next level so let's uh, let's put some more walls around it. So we're going to grab a new texture. So go to browse. Let's find something else here. What do we want? How about this wall here? So this is called out underscore wall 6D. You've probably seen this in um, forget about Freeman and where the where you the control the airstrikes. All right, now I'm just using that um, block creation tool here, and I'm just drawing some blocks. Now I'm going to click into the camera and look over here just to see where it is putting it. And you can see in the 2D view as well. What we want is we're going to go back into selection, actually go back into the uh, block tool. I'm just going to drag that up like that. All right, so see how it disappears when you go back into selection, but it, it's still saved in the block creation tool. So, if, so you can click back in here, and it's it remembers. We're gonna right click, create, zoom in, and just kind of see how it looks. Textures aligned perfectly. If I would have made it taller, we would like I showed you earlier, it would have been kind of overlapping with another tile. So we want to pull that back down. I'm gonna pull this up here again. I'm using I'm using sh uh, shift. Yeah, let me explain that. So I'm gonna delete that. So you can use shift to copy. So I'm clicking here, holding shift, and I'm dragging it, and it's keep it's gonna keep the old one and create a new one. So that's handy. So let's move that up, and you can see what we did there. All right, now I'm going to click one, hold down control, click the other one. I now have selected both. Now I'm going to use hold down shift and copy. Control R is to rotate, put it in place. All right, I'm going to click out of that just so it's not red. And you can see we have two floors here. Now you notice on the second level we have that wall texture and it looks really weird. So I'm going to use, I'm going to put some more of this floor tile down here. Um, what we can do is go back into browse. I'm going to type floor again. And let's grab just any, actually let's do FLR. Let's find something different. How about this one down here? Tunnel underscore floor. All right. now we need to apply the texture to the existing block and that's when this comes in handy so we're going to open this texture application mode I'm going to move that there now that I have this I can just see this little paint bucket I can just paint what texture I want so I'm going to right click on there right click on there I'm pressing Z to move the camera and on pressing Z to go back to the paint tool and right click right click 
and now we can take a look with the camera and see how it looks. Not bad for first time, so okay. Now, remember what I told you, we can't have any void, so we could put a sky here, but let's put a roof or a ceiling. So let's go back in here to browse. See, now we're choosing browse from now that we have this window open. We can do the same like we did in that small texture window. Now we're going to do it in this surface properties window. And let's find... So we can just have in this filter down here, or we can just leave it blank and look at everything. So there's a lot to work with. I'm just going to skim through here. Here's like a generic. This is a lab one wall or something. So let's do that. And now with my side view down here in the bottom left, I'm going to go up to the block tool and I'm just going to draw a block across the top. I'm going to zoom out and make sure that it is good enough. And we're going to even just pull it over a little bit just so it encompasses and it's pretty even. Right click, you can right click anywhere in any of the 2D views and do create object. All right, so we have this sort of arena where a Gordon could <laughs> do a number of things. Um, right now we don't have any stairs or ladders, so we can go ahead and move Gordon onto the second floor. So we're gonna click right on here using the selection tool and we're just gonna drag him into place. drag them right here okay so that means when you start the game you'll start here now notice he's not um, he's kind of floating so you'll spawn and then fall a few units but it should be okay because it's not within the normal fall damage but we can zoom in if we want to and move him down now watch what happens when I move him down it's it's remembering the the grid size here so Right here, he'll be too too low into the ground. So we want to lower the grid. And now we can click on the info player start, which is our starting point, and move it up, and that should be fine. Finally, we want a light, because otherwise we'd be in a dark room. So I'm going to go to the little light bulb. Now, this is the entity creation tool. It's not just for lights, it's for all entities. But we're just going to open this and click the objects uh, drop down. Scroll through and look for light. See this, uh, we have a couple different light options, but we just want the one that's called light. And I'm going to sort of stick it right in the center of the second floor here. And you get this um, crosshair that shows you where it's going to spawn or be placed into the map. So I'm going to drag that to the right. And you can see it in the 3D space. And that's good. So I'm going to hit enter. And that brings it brings it into the map. Alright, and that's it. So we can run this up and see what it looks like. Okay, I told you I was going to show you how to compile the map. And that's pretty easy. So we want to make sure that the map is saved. So I've gone ahead and did a file save. And to compile the map, you'll want to click on this little... Nintendo controller in the top right and you'll see it says run the map in the game Alright, and so it has go what's going to happen when it compiles it's going to run through four programs CSG BSP VIS and light uh, We're going to set those all to keep those as normal and they all serve different purposes for compiling the map into a playable thing If we don't want to run it we can click that but we are just going to go ahead and let it launch into half-life after it's done, uh, you'll want to make sure that Steam is running. Otherwise, it will fail to run uh, load up the game. So we'll hit OK. And then you'll see it's doing everything it needs to do. And on modern computers, it's pretty fast, especially for a room that size. All right, and here's our map. And you see the lighting looks completely different from in the design view in the editor. And uh, that is... You see that light entity that we dropped in there created that spot. It's kind of glowing in all directions. Let's jump down here, and you'll notice that uh, the walls are not exactly what we put in here, but um, that has to do with uh, certain 
certain walls have certain properties and that one that we used uh, randomly places a series of textures so some of them have this little uh, piping thing one of them has a vent we see this uh, valve and it just kind of did it at random uh, I think it's random when the map loads to be honest but there we are <laughs>